All right, guys, you're live. All right. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for coming out tonight. Keep this down while I talk. Get back up after I'm done. I'm Mike Frizzalone, one of your Will County Board members. Sitting next to me is uh, Steve Bellich, another County Board member that represents the Lockport area. We have with us on the end, Ruben Pasvino, one of your trustees here in Homer Glen. We have Deputy Chief Brian Concert and Lieutenant Holly. Holly, you know that uh, we are the only village in uh, Will County that is represented by the uh, Sheriff's Department in Will County. We contract them, the Homer contracts with them and then they patrol all of the other areas that are unincorporated in Willow County. Uh, and that's out of about 62 municipalities. We're the only smart ones. We hired these guys to handle this one. <laughs> Lieutenant Holly handles uh, the local area here, and uh, Deputy Chief uh, Brian is uh, running the show with the sheriff out at uh, the county. So tonight we wanted to get together. You know, public safety has been a big issue, not just here, but everywhere recently. We've had some issues here in the area, and we just want to make sure everyone is alert to what has happened, things that we can do to prevent issues or how to be aware of things. So we thought we would have them come out tonight and talk to us a little bit about that. So I'm going to turn it over to Deputy Chief. Yeah, that right? Uh, I'm under Sheriff Frank Connor. I was born and raised here in Homer Glen. Um, I currently live in Homer Township. Uh, I held this position in Homer Glen prior to him, before Jimmy took over. He's doing a great job here. Um, he's, he has some of these uh, issues detailed out for you, so I'm going to turn this over to Lieutenant Howard. Hi, everybody. Thanks for being here. Um, the biggest thing I want to get out there is the police and the community have to work together, right? Um, it's not an us and them mentality, it's all of us as one as community, be it the board members uh, from the village, the county board, um, the police, the community, because we cover a lot of area, of course, but I want you to also know that we are we have dedicated units dedicated just to Homer Glen as well, okay? But that being said, as much as we patrol, it's humanly impossible, impossible to be everywhere at once, right? So the citizens are our eyes and ears as well. Okay, and observing things. So I want to make sure you know that I want to work hand in hand with you. Okay, and that all starts with communication. All right. Um, before I go off on a tangent, um, any you guys up here at the table or the board members there? Do you guys have any questions before I get rolling? On stuff? Okay, good. Thank you. Um, as far as the, the uh, recent crime surge in this area. I can tell you this area is not the only one. Um, the suburbs all around Chicagoland. At first, you know, we were thinking just southwest suburbs, but I've talked to uh, officers from other areas. The northwest suburbs, the, the entire area surrounding Chicago has seen um, an uptick in crime, okay? And what we're seeing out here is a uh, large spike in crimes of opportunity, okay? And what's that mean? Crimes of opportunity is if it's there in an unlocked vehicle, an item is an un unlocked vehicle, I'm going to take it. If there are keys left in a vehicle or a key fob for the push button starts, they're going to take it. Okay? They're going down the street, trying door handles. As simple as that. That door unlocks if there's a computer, a purse, any type of valuables that they can take, they're going to take it. If they can take the car, they'll take that as well. Okay? The scary part with that, taking a car, a lot of us have our garage doors open or, or garage door openers in the vehicles that gives them access to the house. Okay, so that's our biggest concern is the welfare and protection of everybody. Property can be replaced, but life is precious and we have to preserve that life, okay, especially our loved ones. Um, so I just want everybody to remember, even though a car is in your garage, you shouldn't be leaving your keys in that car either. We have seen it where um, they'll use the garage door opener in the unlocked vehicle that's in a driveway to open the garage door, take the car out of the garage, okay? Not necessarily in Homer. Has it happened in Homer? Yes, but it has happened in all the areas surrounding as well. So I hope everybody understands what I mean by crimes of opportunity. It's not like the old days. Is everybody familiar with the term like slim jimming a car? You know, you should take the bar and lift it. Well, with the technology they have now, Almost, it's almost next to impossible to do that. 
So I'd say, I can't give you an exact number, folks, but I'm going to estimate 95% of them unlock vehicles. Keys in the car, fobs in the car, okay? Um, the only time we'll see a window smashed is generally at a park. Not necessarily just here at Homer, but I'm saying any park throughout the county. If there's a purse left on the seat, say somebody goes to a dog park or goes for a walk, sometimes they don't want to carry the purse with them, they'll leave it on the seat or, or on the floorboard, they'll still see it, they'll smash the window out to get it. That's when we see the window smashed, just to grab items, not to take the car, okay? I know what's raised the concern more than anything was the theft of all those vehicles, okay? And especially what happened at McDonald's with the carjacking, okay? Um, please know that we are on patrol all the time. When that call came out, we had a guy literally about 30 seconds away from where that happened. By the time he got the call, though, they were already on, on the road heading east out of here. Um, but that being said, um, I don't know, you got anything to add in that uh, Just, I mean, if you see somebody shaking door handles in your neighborhood, yeah. call us. You absolutely can help us out because at least we'll be in that area. We're probably going to catch them, maybe if we're lucky. If not, you know, I mean, it never hurts to give us a call. I mean, that's what we're here for. And if we need more cars, we have 18 other units working in Will County that we could send this direction because we want to stop this. And the only way we can stop it is through the collaborative effort of everybody here. You know, I mean, you see something, you let us know. Yeah, and Brian brings up a good point. There's been a few times, folks, that we have found out via social media that car handles were being tried the night before because people checked the ring after the videos the next day. Did they call the police? No. They're telling their neighbors and everybody on social media about it, but not telling us. Okay? We try and monitor things the best we can, but we want to make sure there's no wall in between the community and us. We have to do this hand in hand. Okay? We're part of this community. Uh, I can tell you um, offhand, I said my two day shift teams, they picked here again. We have yearly shift picks and they consistently pick here year after year. My one midnight team is all the same guys. I'm telling you, 80, probably 85% of the guys that are up here right now picked again. They're picking more year in and year out. And like the undersheriff said, he grew up around here. And a lot of our guys did. So it's not just a job, and I know it sounds corny or cliche, I'm not trying to say that, but it's, it's, it's an honest uh, truth statement when I make it, that we take it personal, okay? You're not just people we're getting paid to protect, it's our community, okay? We're invested in it. I myself have been here, I don't know, between being a sergeant, a lieutenant, five to seven years, every bit of it, and uh, I tell you, if we get a car stolen, we take it personal, okay? Especially the shift that was on when it happened, okay? Um, so what, what Brian brought up, this communication is huge, please call us. Too, too often we hear after the fact, somebody will tell us, hey, we saw, uh, we saw some guys that thought they might be suspicious, I want to let you know, but it's two, three days later. Folks, don't be afraid to call us. That's what we're paid to do, okay? If I could give you an example, about 2009 I was working up here as a deputy. I got a call at around 2 a.m. in reference to a, a like, a 19, 20 year old urinating on the side of his vehicle. We went there, not a huge threat, right? But he had one of those Buick Roadmasters. I went to that car, looked in the back window, I saw golf clubs and stuff, like you pull for garages all night. So I said, hey dude, where'd you get the clubs? And I can see the name on the tag. I got a golf tag name. So I went to my car, I found that. I had dispatch call this guy on his phone who, lived, who was a resident here. Um, I got made contact with them. I said, hey, where's your golf clubs? They're in my garage. I said, could you go check your garage? Holy cow, my golf clubs are gone. So just by somebody calling, we solved a lot of burglaries that night, just by somebody calling for urinating next to a vehicle. You know, those are the types of calls that you think, oh, no big deal. But that probably solved seven or eight BMVs. They call it car hopping happened. They just check the doors, open the garage door um, for, the, for the unlocked cars. But that case was solved with the community calling in for something that's minor or something you're going to get. It's kind of bizarre, two o'clock in the morning after this time. Yeah. And it brings up another great point. Oh, yes, go ahead. Uh, you guys prefer the non-emergency number or 911 numbers? Well, 911 is always for emergencies, everybody, okay? And I can tell you, if, if everybody has something to write with, our non-emergency number, I'll give it to you while we're talking about it, so I don't forget, it's 815 
I'll repeat it for you, okay? I see some people digging for a pen. 815-727-8575. Uh, and when that comes up, there's a recording. It'll get you to the different departments within the, within the Sheriff's Department, like the traffic office, records, you know, investigations, that kind of stuff. But if you hit zero, that'll get you right to a dispatcher. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, county wide. Great question. Thank you for that. Um, and also, sometimes people say, if I have this kind of crime, do I dial 911? Do I dial the non-emergency? Folks, I tell everybody, time is of the essence. So if you're not sure if it's an emergency or not, dial 911. Okay? Me, yes, ma'am. 727. Okay. 8575. Thank you. Sure. Hey, guys. Guys, it's Mark I mean, I... We cannot hear the questions on the Zoom call. Can somebody please repeat the question? <laughs> Brock, do you have something? Lieutenant Holly, um, Homer Glenn contracts Will County to, to be our uh, to be our police uh, force. Can you can you uh, give us the benefits of having Will County as our uh, police department compared to if we were to be a municipality? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Um, before I go on, Brock, I will answer that. Folks, did I answer that question okay? As far as, if, if it's a question, if it's an emergency or not, be sure to dial 911. Okay? Um, as far as uh, Sheriff's Department, it's a great question. Thank you for that. The big thing I want everybody to realize, I, I, as far as sworn personnel, Brian, I think we're around 230, thereabouts? Yeah. 230 sworn personnel in enforcement, okay? And what's good is, for the village, we have dedicated officers that are assigned just to Homer Glen. But if I call for help, I have, like he said, on shift, 18 other cars coming in here. I have a SWAT team, fully operational SWAT team. I have an investigations division, which is larger than most small town police departments in and of itself. We have a dedicated crime scene investigations division where if you have a small department, a lot of the time, I give those guys credit, but the deputy on the street has to process his own crime scene, okay? So I can call for CSI and get them out here. And what that does, if I need investigators for crime scene investigation, what's great is we secure the scene. Once the scene is secure, I can backfill, and then guess what? My deputies that were handling that call are back out on the street on active patrol, so they're not tied up on that call, okay? The other thing is, if we have a long, drawn-out situation, God forbid, say we're sitting on a house and we're sitting and sitting and sitting, the deputies can be relieved. We have manpowers to supplement that, okay? And uh, that overtime is incurred by the sheriff's office. Yes, that's correct. In addition to that, we also have an auxiliary unit for yes, sir. Uh, the Homer Fest, the long traffic control. If we, the church with the crying icon, which was on Bell Road several years back, it was create traffic team. We called out another four facilities. They were no cost to the village of Homer Glen. Those are volunteers for the Sheriff's Department. And from the county perspective, from Steve and I, you know, on the county board, we've done everything we can over the last several years to support uh, the Sheriff's Department. We got them uh, new vehicles. We're updating the vehicles on a regular basis now. And that's all in the county budget at this point. So they'll never be driving some vehicle that'll blow an engine, which was the case in the past. Uh, so they have the best vehicle available. Um, there also is a lot of other equipment, SWAT equipment and specialized equipment that the Sheriff's Department has that they can access at any time. And from a financials perspective, there is no way that you can run a local police department at the cost that we're paying uh, for the sheriff's department. Because again, they already have all that, they already have all the training. We're paying a set fee, or the, the village is paying a set fee every year to the department for them to cover our area. You know, in many other areas and jurisdictions in the United States, they only have county sheriffs. You go down to Miami, Miami, Dade County. They have their county department covers all of the villages in the area. It just makes more sense, like the tenant says, when you have all of that backup available to you, they can move resources here to, and immediately. If you're in a small village and you only have four or five people and somebody calls them sick, then they have a little bit more difficulty doing backup. Not that they wouldn't call the Sheriff's Department for help in some of those cases, but we have all that backup available to us. 
Thank you. And one of the things that we really need to look at around here is property taxes. And if we did not have the share, you can experience about a 20% or more increase in your property tax, and we'd have less coverage than we already got. And I've talked to people, you know, like in Lockport, talked to the mayor, I've talked to other mayors, and I told them, it benefits us in Homer Glen by having the Sheriff's Department money-wise, plus service-wise. So we're way better off using the Sheriff. Now, does the Sheriff make a profit off this? Probably makes a little bit. But so what? We're saving tons and tons of money, and we're getting way better service than we could ever get on our own. Ever. We, there's no way we can match what we get for the money. It's impossible. Thank and you. we don't have to have a jail here. We have a jail in Oak County. We don't have to have people in a holding tank, and you have to have, uh, I think it's three police officers, correctional officers, and a holding tank that nobody's in. But you still have to have them on duty. So when you start adding all this up, thank God we got the Sheriff's Department. Brian, I don't, is there any equipment that you guys are want for that the county hasn't given you? No, you, you guys have been great to us. <laughs> for the crimes that are being committed when the uh, people are car surfing and checking the door handles to see if they can get into cars, obviously they're not breaking an entry. But the, is the crime charge different if the car is on the street as opposed, as opposed to being on your driveway? No, if they, enter, if they enter a vehicle, it's a burglary motor vehicle. It, it doesn't matter if it's on private or, or on the street. Things change if it's in a garage, if it's a attached garage, it turns into a residential burglary. Okay, and a lot of other communities are having the same problem from the way I've been here. Uh, have we gotten together with other communities and actually caught any groups of these people yet? We have. We, we get a lot of intelligence from up north because this is um, a faction out of Chicago it comes randomly to different subjects. So there's a lot of um, intel that's been shared with it. However, they're so random. We saturated patrols in some areas, we gave them, we have a gang suppression unit, gave them some of those guys, we gave some of our warrants guys. And when these guys all go out together, they're up and dirty. You know what I mean? It's not uh, just a Will County problem, it's, you know. And what, and what type of charge is that at that point? What if they get caught? Motor vehicle theft if they're in somebody's car where they left their farm. Not considered a felony, right? Oh, yes. Oh, Absolutely. It Absolutely. Yeah. It is a felony. Yeah. So now when it goes to the state's attorney, we're not having the same problems that they are in Chicago with 10 felonies and then you finally get one, right? Not even close. Not no, no. no. <laughs> they said, yes. Yeah, they set the bonds high and yes, we don't have as many inmates in our jail and those are the crimes that, you know, Crimes against persons and property that are going to uh, give you a heavy, heavy bond. Thank you. Right. We you here. Yes. Thank you. In the back. I have a question. It's more of a phrase report for you all. My husband and I have lived in the city of Chicago, right next to 18th Street Station, like literally right next to it. And we had our car broken into probably like three times while we lived there. And it would take them literally three to four hours for them to come to our house. We had something happen here in Homer Glen right when we moved in, and it literally took two minutes. So okay. I just want to thank you guys, like as a you know a resident here, how safe you feel, and you know I see you out there often. My son always waves to your car; they always wave back. So I just want to say thank you because that's really important. You feel safe here. Yes. <laughs> They are on Wednesday evenings in this room, uh, 6.30 p.m., first Wednesday of the month. So if you have anything uh, going on throughout the village, if you live in the village of Homer Glen and you want to report it, uh, if it's not such an emergency, but things that we, we do everything from stop signs to traffic control to you name it, and well, we, we visit those issues. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, but I just wanted to mention that Lieutenant Holly sits on that committee. Well. Absolutely, thank you. Yeah. And, and yeah. I guess, actually, our next meeting is this Wednesday oh, that's at right. 6.30. Yeah. And I was going to say, what's nice is my, my boss, the undersheriff, like I said, he was in a position before me, 
So if I come to him with a concern, he's fully understanding of what I'm, I'm bringing to him because he's sat in my seat before. So it's a blessing. And even more so, he grew up in this neighborhood, so he understands the ins and outs of this area as well. So it's such a blessing for me. And, and thank you in the back again for that compliment. What I want to tell everybody is, um, you know, yes, we are a sheriff's department, but we treat Homer Glen like a municipality. So it's the best of both worlds that way. Thank you guys for bringing it up, that we can backfill it as need be. Through the entire COVID situation, whatever you want to call it, um, we did not lose any staffing whatsoever. If for some reason, two of our guys go down, let's say, on a shift, say they had an arrest, but one guy, God forbid, gets in a car accident, something like that, guess what? They're shifting people to my zone. That's the priority we're contracting. You're not gonna lose manpower or staffing through any type of turbulence. They'll hire back to backfill this zone. Okay, I wanna make sure everybody knew that. Do we have a, a certain area in one that it has more problems than others? Because in our subdivision, we don't have a whole lot of problems. And we see cars going through the subdivision all the time. We're waving hello. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank, extend a thank you oh, to you guys for keeping our community safe. Mm -hmm. But uh, being that we do hear that there is a problem, that's why we're all here, is there a focused area where there really is a problem? Well, that's a great question, and thanks for asking it. I can tell you that, let, let me back it up a little bit. You know the civil unrest that's been going on, okay? When that first kicked off that first night, I believe it was a Sunday night, it seems like it was yesterday. But I can tell you, when, there was rumors flying around social media that they were coming to Homer Glen. Does anybody remember that? Yeah, coming from Orland, heading our way, right? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I had so many car, you had two lieutenants, a few sergeants, and numerous deputies in this town, like a wall, waiting, okay? So that's one thing as far as crime isn't just, how do I put it? It's always changing. I use that for an example because that's something that we didn't see coming at the time, right? But we were able to shift all our resources to that. In addition to that, we activated our SWAT team that Sunday night. I was out with uh, SWAT units. In, wherever this may have occurred, we were sending people out. If yeah. need be, we were sending our guys. We had a team of probably like 36 guys because we, until they're deemed not incredible, we're going to act on it. And that's what we did that Yes, and We absolutely. did it the entire week after because the chatter was coming in each night. We're going to break up the new windows of the new courthouse. What a nice building. But until we deem it not credible, we got to act on it. Yeah. And, and what's nice, everybody, I was on the phone literally. <coughs> he's the undersheriff, second command of the entire county. He was on the phone directly with me, checking in regularly. Sheriff Mike Kelly, same thing. So I, I couldn't ask for better support. Um, but getting back to your, your original question, when it's, how do I say it? It's, that was an immediate situation. When we have an ongoing with these car thefts and that, we'll, we'll focus not only our deputies, because our deputies have to, the ones that are signed to Homer Glenn have to watch our businesses as well, because we're dealing with retail thefts on a regular basis as well, right? Um, but what we'll do is we'll bring in not, I'll, I'll not only have my deputies focus on a certain situation like the neighborhoods, but we'll also bring in additional units if need be. Like he said, I can have TAC guys or, or gang unit guys come in undercover to watch stuff. Investigations, and that's another thing. Our investigations, I gotta say, as busy as they are, if I make a call, they are on it. They'll send plain clothes guys up so people don't even know they're there, okay? Um, so as far as focusing attention, I'd like to tell you that um, you know, we're focused on the businesses right now. Well, we're focused on that, but we are also focusing on the neighborhoods because the concern from everybody is, man, I'm hearing about cars getting stolen in the area, I'm hearing about a carjacking, I'm hearing about this and that. So I, I can't focus on one area, you know? Um, so that's what's nice being supplemented by investigations and gang unit and, and uh, the other units is, if I need to shuffle bodies into a certain area for a sting operation per se, they can do that, okay? What I kind of was going back to was, are the criminals focusing on a certain area of Homer? Or is it no. spread through? Right, it could be. And then it's crimes of opportunity, too. Yeah. Um, just like the vehicle that was stolen at the McDonald's uh, probably a few weeks back. Uh, that was just, you know, sitting in the drive, so I don't know the exact, uh, I haven't actually read the police report on it, but it's a crime of opportunity. They, let, they liked the car and was in the drive through so that was the one they went after. I'm sure you saw the, the pictures or what have you. But by all means, lock your doors. If there's an escape room, try and get out of there. Um, you know, it's 
if you're at the ATM, be aware of your surroundings. If the car's following you into the, that bank, you may just want to drive through and go back around. You know, just be aware of your surroundings. I, um, when they first started this, they abducted somebody in the Mokina Frankfurt area and emptied out his bank account and took him with. You know, they kidnapped this guy. So just look out your windows before you, you pull out of your garage in the morning. Make sure there's no suspicious vehicles you know, down the road, or, you know, if there is, call us. That is, you know, one of those situations where it's a crime of opportunity. They block your driveway off. If you can't, if you're not, I mean, it's why they block my driveway off, you stop. There's usually um, pairs. They operate in pairs. They're going to come steal your car, or even worse, try to take you with them to empty out, you know, your bank cards or what have you. Yeah, did we answer that question, <laughs> Mr. Fiala? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. I think this real important about what they're saying, calling, is on uh, May 31st when the riot started. I called uh, the undersheriff, told him that there was a bunch of suspicious cars in the uh, right front of Taz's. And I would say within five minutes, they had a bunch of police there, and then the cars left. So when you see something bad, just like they said, you need to call because they will respond immediately. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think, really important to know. We were talking about the ATM, and so you have to be aware of who's, you know, mm -hmm. behind you. But um, I've heard that the scammers can put a camera in there and get all your IDs from your ATM card. Have you ever dealt with something like that? Yeah, I'll be honest with you, I'm not an IT guy as much. And we do deal with a lot of identity theft, okay? And I, I'll probably forget, there's a lot going on in this ball that I may forget, but I want to talk to you about scams at the end, so somebody please remind me about that, okay? But uh, yeah, there are readers out there, but as far as widespread in Will County, I have not seen it, Brian, have you yeah, seen no, it? No, I personally have not seen it up here. And a reader, you should be able to, if you wiggle or right. whatever, you know, they're, they're pretty high tech now where they can't even put a reader on. Well, so like, got a lot of cameras around. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. So um, that's not as big a crime as it once was, but still, you know, yeah. if you see something that's normally not on, your, on, on the ATM, I wouldn't put my card in there. Yeah, and you know what? I'll be honest with you. Like if I go to a car wash and put, go to put my card in and say that, you know, that receptacle is shaped like that, I'm always, I'm, I'm, I'm grabbing every part of it to make sure. <laughs> Yeah. Um, did anybody else have their hand up? Because I, I thought I'd just kind of go right into the carjacking part. And the reason I wanted to go into the carjacking part, it's a crime of violence, number one, okay? But number two, there's a mindset that we as citizens can have, which encompasses not only that, but robbery, burglary, all of this kind of stuff, okay? So I wanted to bring this out, and what I want to remind you, yeah, our time's different than when we grew up, absolutely, okay? But it doesn't mean you have to live in fear, okay? Like Brian said, being aware of your surroundings, knowledge is power, everybody. When you're looking around and you're aware of what's going on around you, you're in control of the situation. How often do you pull up to a street light? You know, say you're in traffic, what's the person next to you doing? If they stop for a moment, if they're in the checkout line at the grocery store, you pass kids at a bus stop when they used to have bus stops. They're doing this, right? Nobody's aware of their surroundings. Simply putting that down and being aware of your surroundings, you are empowering yourself. I don't want you to live in fear, okay? What they're doing, like we've said a lot, is they're, uh, it's all crimes of opportunity, okay? I may look down a lot, but there's a lot of information I've got, and I just don't want to forget something, okay? Um, criminals, they want an easy target. They want the person that's not paying attention, okay? How often have you guys been driving through, say, the Meyer lot, for example, and you stop at the stop sign, somebody comes out of those doors looking at their phone, they don't even stop. They would have been hit by a car if you're not paying attention, right, everybody? So if they're not paying attention to a big old car, they're going to pay attention to the criminal that's lurking and waiting, okay? Um, like Brian said, they're operating in groups of two, okay? You'll have a, most times a stolen vehicle will roll up, the offender will get out, steal the car, and they're both leaving. Here's the plate. Well, it's coming back stolen out of Gurney, it's coming back stolen out of Oklahoma. Okay? Um, just simple things. And uh, I apologize if I get too long winded, somebody can stop me as I go. But simple things like parking your car in a parking lot. Be aware of where you're parking. Okay? Is it fun to back out of a parking spot at Jewel? Not really. If you can, have your nose facing out. Because when I go to reverse like this, my back is turned. 
This whole back side of me is open. I go to turn around, there's a guy at my window, what am I going to do? Okay, just something to think about. Um, when approaching your vehicle, have your head up on a swivel. Just look around a little bit. Simple as that, okay? Before you get in your car, one last look. Make sure nobody's in the car. If you left your car unlocked, you don't want somebody waiting in there. Then you're a hostage, okay? Um, uh, if someone approaches you while you're getting into your car, move. Too often we see people freeze. They start asking them questions, right? For them to make you a victim, they gotta close the distance. Hey, here's, here's, say here's the car, and some guy's coming towards me on this side, I'm gonna go around the front of my car to the other side, I got a car in between me, okay? And remember, most times you're in public. If you need to yell, somebody help me, <laughs> do it. There's no embarrassment, okay? Get the public aware of what's going on. Um, let's see, oh, when you get in your car, as soon as you sit down, lock it. Lock it first. Okay? You can always put your phone down. You can always, you know, move stuff. How about in the morning? You gotta adjust the mirror. Your spouse moved everything. That door is locked. Okay? Um, put your seatbelt on right away, too. Not only for your own safety, but carjackers want to grab somebody, get them out of the car right now. If you're in your seatbelt, it's more, more time that they gotta mess with you. Okay? Um, don't roll the windows down until you're in gear and you're moving, okay? You're sitting in your driveway, you put the windows down, they have access to you. Now, can, can uh, glass on the side of a car stop a bullet? No, but guess what it will stop? Knives and hands, okay? Just something else to think about, another deterrent. Um, oh, in traffic, everybody. Remember when we went to driver's ed years ago? They always taught us, when you stop, you should see the bottom of the tires of the car in front of you. How often do we see cars in traffic? Boom. They're on your butt, right? Well, if somebody comes up to you, you have no way to escape, okay? The best thing is, if you're in line somewhere and there's a gap in front of you, and you see some, somebody coming at you, you think it's no good, you got room to pull out and drive away. You always want to create that distance, okay? And it's also safe. There's a few times that we see car accidents where it's a three-car accident because somebody will rear-end this car and rear-end that car. It's bad enough getting rear-ended, but if you're in the middle and you got that room, there's still a be out there. Okay? Um, let's see. Talked about that. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. You're talking about being aware of your surroundings. Yes. Lately, I've been looking and there's a lot of uh, cars that have black windows in the front. So I pulled up to a, a stop light. Yeah. I looked around and there was no other cars near us but one next to me. It was a truck and I looked, it was black. I could not see anything in it. And it scared me. And yeah. I was talking to people up and saying, do you think that possibly they would start enforcing the law more about not having these black windows? Yeah, I can tell you, us as police, we are not happy about the tent levels, okay? And, and, and I'll be honest with you, as of right now, I do not know the percentage because they've been changing them every year, okay? Um, I can tell you it's too dark, especially for my guys working midnights. We cannot see into these cars. It's an officer safety issue. So we will enforce it, but we have to have clarity from the legislature as well on what you know level it is to enforce. Yeah, so yeah. they looked it up for Illinois to 35%. Yeah, so what they did for years, they gave us cards we'd have to put behind the glass to check. There used to be no tint in the drivers or passengers. Right. That was awesome, but I don't know why they opened that up. I mean, it's a difficult <laughs> Yeah, it's really difficult. It is. But even like when you're trying to stay at a distance with cars, yep. and you're in a, say, two lane or three lane, yes, it's like, you know, what are you doing? And you, you think, well, okay, I'll be away from the driver's side, but then there's a the passenger side, yeah. and you can't see. No, you so can't you, see. I mean, you don't know what you're, what you're, what could happen. Sure. If we think something's too dark, we can pull it over. I mean, it's an equipment violation that gives us probable cause to pull it over. Um, we're not going to just ignore it. But even for you to walk up to a car that's that would look like it's dangerous. Amen. Yes, it is. Absolutely. In addition, people get uh, a note from their doctor that they have something where the sunlight right. affects their um, certain um, medical conditions right. can affect you. And I have seen them with notes, whether or not they're you know, legitimate, you've got to take them at the face value. Yeah. But that's probably a small amount. And, and they did say it's, all, it's against the law. So <coughs> why aren't they, you know? doing this more often as far as actually, you know, you get so many, you're done. You know, the cars, you take the car or something. Right. Yeah. No, believe me, nobody's more frustrated than the police on the tent issue. That's a big, big issue for us. Absolutely. And our car dealers, 
selling it with that heavy tint, or are they taking it somewhere and have it done with it? It depends on the dealer. You know, some are regular established dealers, others are, you know, fly by night operations that'll put whatever you want on there. Right? So, I mean, there's times it's obvious how dark it is and we can pull them over. At night, it's really hard to tell, I'll be honest. Um, and then, um, sorry, uh, anybody have anything with the window tint besides? I really didn't answer it, but I mean, we will check it. If we, if we have a car over on the stop and we think it's too dark, we'll check it. Yeah, no doubt. Absolutely. Because it's an officer awesome safety. I'm just noticing that more and more now that we're all aware of Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, the other thing, folks, I'm glad we're talking about the carjacking. Remember, I mean, I'm a car guy, okay? I love my cars. And I. I'm one of the weird guys that talks to it. You know, it's got a personality, right? <laughs> but that being said, it's still not worth getting harmed over it for your life. It's a, it's property. We got insurance for a reason, I tell people. If the guy's on you, he surprised you, it is what it is. Throw your keys, make him go get the keys, and take off the other way. It's just a piece of property, okay? We don't want to see anybody hurt over this stuff. It's not that. I mean, it's important to us that it's a crime, but I want you to know your life is infinitely more important than a vehicle, okay? Um, and then, anybody with little kids? Yeah, it, it's, it's key that we do that observing as we're going with the car. Because if you're loading a child into a car seat, and I don't know who the engineers that designs it's somebody's car seats, but it takes forever to get your kids in, you want to be aware of your surroundings, okay? And Brian and I were talking about this before the meeting. Hey, if, it, if a guy is coming to take my car and my babies are in a car, <laughs> guess what? Fight times. It's not about the car. Yeah. It's about those kids. And they don't want the kids either. They just no. want a car. They, they, they don't either. But yeah, I, I would fight for, in that situation. Yes, ma'am. That's one of my biggest fears. I have two in car seats. Yes. And it's like, you know, obviously I try to, you're coming from the city, you're scared anyway. <laughs> you know, so I do try to maintain that looking around. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's times where your back is completely turned. You're wrestling with one, you've got the other. Yeah. And you know, um, it's a, that's a scary situation. It's kind of like, then what do you do? You know, you've got two kids locked into a car seat. They want your, they probably don't know that you have two kids in there. Well, right. Like, let's say it yeah. was my wife in that McDonald's drive through with right. two kids. What's the play? Yeah. Drive out. I don't care if you gotta hit something on the way out. Yep. You're in control. Of that vehicle is more powerful than what they got. If you gotta floor it to get out of there, get out of there. Okay. You have a four thousand pound weapon. That's that right. right there. And folks, I want everybody to know, I'm not second guessing anything that happened. Second guessing anything that the kid did that day. He did what he was presented with. He handled himself perfectly. But as far as yeah, with the kids, all all bets are off. You do what you got to do. Simple as that. Did that answer it, sir? Floor it. Floor it, man. And, and make sure your doors are locked. I mean, they're not, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, you know, I mean. One McDonald's they got in is his passenger door open, right? And he got into the car. I'd have to confirm that. That's what I thought I'd read. So if it had been locked and they couldn't get in, would he have been smart to try and pull out of there? He might have hit them and their car. But if you pull out, yeah, you do what you have to do in a, in a crisis situation, yeah. And that's why I said, if you got babies in the back and you think this guy's trying to take your car, well, I'm sorry, guy in front of me, if I hit you, I need to get out of here. It is what it is. And the other thing, folks, this is a crime of violence. If this guy is coming at you, he has been planning this, He's already at a certain level. He's coming to get you or get your car. If you're going to end up being to that point where you have to fight, it's no holds barred. You got to fight. There's no okay. Maybe I'll hit him and see how he's doing. There's none of that. You got to get after him. Pen, throw the purse, whatever you got to do. It's fight they don't want attention brought to them either by right. doing that. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I said yell as loud as you can, get everybody's attention. There's good Samaritans out there that will run over. Yes, ma'am. What if you're a concealed carry? Yeah, that's a great, great point. Concealed carry is a, a, a very valuable asset, but also with you know valuable tools comes great responsibility, right? So you just want to make sure if you got your CCL, make sure you're staying up to speed as far as your training goes, your reaction, okay? You want to go through scenarios in case you have to, uh, to act. Something to consider, I'll remember to call on you. What if we accidentally run them over? <laughs> Situational dictate. We look at each situation individually, and that's the thing with police work, folks. 
A lot of gray area out there. Each situation is going to be different. No two situations are the same, I can tell you that. Yeah. Um, but where was I at with that? I'm sorry. You know, Thank you, sir. Yeah. So a big thing to remember, let's use a busy parking lot. Let's say you're at Menards and you have to pull the gun because somebody's getting you. Depending where you're at, if you miss a couple rounds, you're firing into the store, you're firing into other cars. It's, there's a lot to it. So I want you to run through scenarios in your own head so you're pre prepared to do this. But you have to stay up with your training as well. Okay? Great responsibility. Now, um, not to get too ahead of ourselves, but you want to remember, though you're, you're lawful in your actions, there's also fallout from it, you know, and that kind of stuff. If, if any of you have gone through the class, they cover the, the civil liability as well as the criminal liability and all that kind of stuff. I don't tell you that to scare you, but you have to have the full knowledge of everything. You know, somebody will say, well, I'll go out there and I'll do this and this. Well, you better think first and know what you're doing before you do it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Good, good. Uh, was there somebody else with their hand up? I'm sorry. Okay. Yes, sir. So as an extension of that uh, question about concealed carry, you know, like, my concern would be, like, if my wife had a, a weapon, um, would that, like, would statistics show that might escalate the situation versus her just flooring it out of there? It could, yeah. And, and that's why what we tell you is not the end-all, be-all for every situation, folks. And um, the situation is going to dictate your reaction. To an extent, okay. Your mindset has to be thinking ahead, but and it's it's easier talking to cops, I guess. But what they do is kind of di kind of dictate how you're going to react to that, okay? If you got if I say you're you're this far away from me, I'm coming at you with a gun. I'm going to kill you. You've got some space. You've got time to pull that weapon. No, you're not. If it's right here, if Brian's in a car and I come up to the window and I'm like this. His reaction, man, hit that pellet, boom, because he's not going to be able to pull it fast enough. Right? Do you see the difference there? Yes. Okay. And, and folks, don't underestimate a knife either. We've been taught, I think it was 21 feet. I think it may be upwards of 27 feet. For a guy at 27 feet away to pull or start running at me with a knife, for me to pull my weapon and get on target and get a good shot off, 21 to 27 feet. So that's something else to consider. Okay? Sorry, I'm a lot of talking. <laughs> During that car check, yeah. weren't, there four, <laughs> weren't there four people in that um, black SUV at McDonald's, too, and two of them got out of the car that had guns? So even if he has concealed carry and you've got four people with guns and you have concealed carry, that's not really going to help you at that point. I, I, that's <laughs> yeah, that's a great point, Mr. Fiago, and I think, I'm glad you brought that up because, like Brian said, there's you know multiple vehicles, usually multiple offenders working together, everybody. So. That's why sometimes just flooring it to get the heck out of Dodge is the way to go. You know, so thank you for bringing that up. Can you update us on that? The yeah. investigation or is that? I can tell you, I can only give out so much, but I can tell you, and I'm glad you brought it up, uh, because not only does it go to investigations, we also have deputies assigned auto theft task forces. So we have multiple entities looking into that. And I can tell you this, folks. We may have said it before, and I apologize if we did. Just like burglary to motor vehicle, if we catch a guy committing a burglary to motor vehicle, we're going to solve 20 to 25. They're not just doing one crime. Okay? Same thing with ceiling cars. They're theft rings. Okay? We catch one, we're going to solve 15 of them. Okay? So because of that, we have multi-agencies working together through investigations, but also through the auto theft task forces, and they're sharing that information. So we're still active on that. Okay. That's not a cold case, I can say that. Thank you, sir, for asking. Do we have anybody under arrest at this point? On that yeah. individual case, I don't believe so. Nobody under arrest. There's a good idea of who it is. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. Thanks. Yeah, yeah I appreciate you asking yeah. that because I forgot to bring that up. Um, yeah, and I appreciate you asking about the concealed carry because that was my next point. So good job. Um, anything else? Yes, sir. This is a little off topic. That's all right. Um, Let's escalate it again. Um, what if they aren't just after the vehicle, they want the people? Like, you know, in, in terms of like trafficking. Oh, I get what you're saying. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great question. And so, as far as take, stealing the car and making a hostage? Or taking the kids deliberately. deliberately. Oh, I get it. That's why, that's why I always suggest if you got an out, take that vehicle, get out of it. Absolutely. And don't sit there and try, try and dial 911. You want to get some distance first. I know I said 911. 
for um, emergencies and it saves time. But in a situation like that, sir, or something to that degree, you do what the heck you have to do at that moment in time. Take care of business. I think he's asking me because we've seen an uptick of videos on social media, maybe from different states, not necessarily Homer Glenn, where sure. the children is the target. Oh, not great. Necessarily the car. Yeah. And, you know, it's, you know, trending and heavily, you know, popular. So, you know, as a parent of little babies, like, that's horrifying. No doubt. You know, so that's... Do me a favor, you guys. That's another topic I want you to bring up, because I think in the flyer they had mentioned keeping children safe, which I think is a great topic for now. So let's bring that. We're going to get to that point. Well, Thank you. Because, you know, as a parent, you know, I, I do feel very safe at home Glen, but I've found myself even feeling safe. I'll see a white van coming down, and my son hit at the face of Driveway. Amen. And all of a sudden, my adrenaline starts rushing. Amen. And maybe it's just an Amazon delivery truck. But, it's all right. You know, that's where we're at. But your father and my mother, that, right. that's how I was two, yeah. 40 years ago. So I think that's normal, but the world is a little different. Yeah, now. and you know what? I like that you're observing and you know where your kids are at. That's key. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, not to get off topic, but the gentleman just mentioned the Amazon truck. And last year, coming around the holiday season, um, I was on the phone with the with the sheriff department on what I was noticing, what was going on. So when there's an uptick on on, on uh, deliveries, Amazon and uh, other delivery parcels, they're using a third party. I don't know how they vet those third party people that are actually hired, but they have white budget vans and they go through the neighborhoods. So these people aren't real workers for these delivery services. They're actually making their notes on the houses, on the types of cars that are around. Um, I think. It was that summer um, before the winter that I noticed some guy selling cookies uh, for a basketball team in the city. And it was the same guy that I saw driving a truck around. Um, I took the license plate down, the van description, um, called it in. And it was the second time that I seen him, first leaving our subdivision, a uh, second time leaving another one further down. And that's when I was like, this, this guy needs to get pulled over. But he, he ended up heading um, westbound on, on uh, an archer, so it went into Lamont. <clears throat> and I, I lost track of it then. But it all stemmed from watching the drivers that are delivering packages be aware of, of who and what times they're dropping them off because they're, they're making their own notes. I actually caught one guy urinating at a, one of the bushes because for whatever reason, he was doing his delivery, then he just went and ran off to the bush, and I, I parked there, and I was, you know, then he ran into his truck and took right. off. But uh, their actual workers are delivering, but they have another agenda also. Sure. And just be careful with, with that. That's throughout the day, when either nobody's home or not that many people are paying attention. And uh, it was just something that I did report last year. And I, yeah. I don't know what happened of it, but that's something to definitely keep in mind. And, uh, Thank you, you mentioned that. Thanks for bringing that up. It brings up an excellent point, everybody. As far as solicitation goes, there, there's a uh, village ordinance on that. They have to you know, uh, get a permit from the village in order to solicit. You get a solicitor, they can't show you a permit cause for the reasons he brought up. It gets us access to uh, you know, see who's in town doing what. And they could be scoping everything out. And please don't let them in your house. Uh, back when I was a young deputy, somebody let the solicitor in her house so I could come check them out. I said, that's a terrible idea. Um, yeah, if you want me to check them out, just call him, wait outside, and, um, but just be smart. And there is another point to that. If you do not want any solicitors or salespeople at your door, you can actually pick up a sign that you can put on your door, and they're not allowed to knock on your door, or you could download it and print it from the village website. So the moment you have that, no basically a no trespassing sign, you can automatically call the police because they're yeah. trespassing. Yeah. Okay. And if anything at all suspicious, call us. Yes, sir. Fred and I did have his car stolen from the garage. Within an hour and a half, the police knew where it was through serious XM. They did that. But it was over in Dalton. Mm -hmm. And he was told that a gang of these kids are 10 to 12 years old that are doing some of this. Is that That's really young from what I haven't seen them that. You know, right. We That's have really caught young. some of them. Uh, so. Later teens, I can see. And they're just stealing them to do other crimes? I mean, because he got his car back, they didn't steal money that was in it or anything. Yeah, again, um, you know, the, the cars that they're being transported in over here are stolen. So they could use this for other crimes. And to your benefit, uh, he came, he got his car back that day. Yeah. Came out of his office a half hour later, and there was three police with the revolvers drawn. They thought he was the the. Yeah. He wrote a two-page letter to him how great they were. Oh, good. 
Thank you. You're very kind. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh, I'm sorry. Mike. I was just going to say, how effective do you think the ring doorbells are? The camera yeah, we, doorbells? we get. I uh, Yeah, I think they're off. Yeah. 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 When I say you look out in the morning, if your ring goes off, you already know if somebody's been out in your neighborhood overnight and what have you. So Absolutely. I swear by the ring doorbell. You know, they're a little bit pricey, but. I don't have the ring, but you could download the app on your phone, and I, I, I'm active on the ring to see what's going on. You pick your radius of what you want reported, and without having the ring myself, I, you could still have the app on your phone and follow up on reports in your area, in the community. Everybody kind of stays in touch with each other that way. And the and sheriff's the, office is a partner with the ring. Right, yes, I see it on the yeah. Sir? The phone card check, where they bump you? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I forgot that. So what he's talking about, folks, if you're in traffic, Somebody bumps you in the back, you go to pull over, they get out, order you out of the car and take your car and steal it. So if, if it's a fender bender where they, they bump you and you're in traffic, definitely go to a uh, public spot. A well, yeah. gasoline station, a police station if you could. Yeah. But yeah, go to somewhere where there's a lot of people. The other thing you can do, you get on the phone, 911, stay on the phone with the dispatcher. Somebody bumped me in the back. I'm, I'm afraid it might be a uh, you know carjacking from uh, bumping, and uh, please say you know they'll, they'll talk you in. You know what I mean? Like hey, go over to here. Here's where the police station is, or whatever. Well, they'll get a car rolling to your yeah. area. Where yeah. are you? You know, know where you are, so we can get somebody over to you right away. And folks, I'm glad you brought that up. Did we answer it by the way? Yeah, thank you. Thank just you. suggestions on how to handle that situation. Absolutely. Especially if you have the kids in the car. Right? Amen. And you want to get out. Yep. Our, our natural reaction is to get out of the car. Amen. Yes. Don't be afraid to drive. Hey, police department, I know I'm supposed to pull over, but I'm afraid of it's a, a bump car jacking. I'm going to drive to where you tell me to go. Because typically, is it just a bump? They're not smashing. No, they're not going to smash. So if there's a gentle bump, 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 odds are just, you know what, just at this point, yeah. Forget it. You'll make scratches later. Amen. They want they want to drive away. No doubt. Um, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm gonna oh yes, ma'am. Um, did home <clears throat> excuse me, allow um, census takers to come to your house if you did mail in your postcard? Because that did happen a couple weeks ago. I was in my car ready to leave and this well dressed census taker, you know, who lives there, how old are they? Age, you guys speak to that? You know, I work in property management and we're at, my understanding is you can't restrict the census takers from coming to your communities. Do yeah. you have any uh, insight? Sure. On? So, um, Matt Walsh, I'm the assistant to the village manager at the village. So, yes, census takers were allowed to okay. come to their house. Luckily, I just thought of that as a scam, maybe. No, absolutely. Yeah, so luckily, we didn't receive many reports or complaints from people coming because Homer Glenn responded to the census very well, so we didn't yeah. have that many people going, but they all had multiple forms of identification right. and you could, there's different ways to check it. So we didn't receive any complaints yeah. about that, but if there are concerns about that, because they are done mm -hmm. um, uh, circulating now, so if that yeah. is going to happen, call the village, call the uh, I just know there's a lot of scams going on. Sure, yes, ma'am. Excellent point. Let's, let's segue to the scams then. So what you'll see, uh, you get driveway ceiling, right? You know, and uh, you'll get the guy knock on the door. You want to make sure that he's you know registered with the village. Don't let anybody into your home because uh, what we'll see is, especially with the elderly, they will um, knock on the front door, distract the elderly person. Well, guess what? Somebody else is going in the house, another route will be right through the house. So if you have loved ones in that that are older, remind them, don't let anybody into the house. They can talk to them through the door. If they're not sure who it is and somebody's at the door and they're nervous, call the police. 911, we can check it out. Same thing with the census taker. If you're not sure it's a census taker, give us a shot, we'll verify all their badging. Make sure they're legit. Okay? Thank you. Absolutely. And and folks, I, I know you're you're uh, you take care of your community, you take care of your neighbors because you're here. And for those of you that live next to elderly neighbors, just try and stay in regular contact with them. That way, if you see a car over there, you know it doesn't really belong there, what's going on. You know, you're more up to speed with it. You don't find out later that she lost all her jewelry or wedding ring and, you know, thousands of dollars that she had in the house. You know. uh, any questions reference to that kind of scam? I can tell you this, I just got one in the mail. The Sheriff's Office does not solicit funds by phone for police athletic leagues or anything like that. Okay? We pay for our own union dues. We're not asking you to take care of that stuff. Okay? 
you don't have to give it to them. That's not, that's not our deal. Okay? What about mail? I'm sorry? Mail. Mail? Yeah, we don't mail anything out. I'm not sending stickers out, none of that stuff. We handle our own business in those. Thank you for asking. Um, back to the 911 real quick, folks. Um, you know, the old landlines, if you dial 911 and hung up right away, it's traced to your house. You got two deputies showing up to your house. With the cell phones, the way they locate, they're locating off of like three towers, okay? So even though um, we had an area, there's several hundred yards that we got to search. So if for some reason you have to dial 911 on your cell phone, please stay on that phone line, okay? That's the best thing you can do. Yes, sir. You can sign up on the county website with your cell phone so they can trace it. There you go. Go ahead, mm -hmm. Brent. Speak to it. Okay, so what he was saying is you can sign up by the, and I believe that's the county EMA website, is that right? Here. To uh, get your phone registered. And then the other thing, folks, is you can text 911. You know, God forbid you're hiding in a closet, you don't want somebody to hear you. Or if you know somebody that's deaf, they can text 911. But that's the, the last line. You know, you, if you can speak and hear, we'd rather have you on the cell phone, stay on the cell phone so we can get updated information, okay? Uh, I don't know if you want to segue to some of these other telephone scams you're getting. Mm -hmm. You know, I told them, oh, my social security number is now locked. And the guy goes, can I get your name? So you just called me to tell me. Right, so th these are scams. The IRS doesn't want an <laughs> Apple Pay card. Um, the uh, don't go to Walmart and pay somebody. These are all scams. If you get one of these calls, or if you're not sure about it, give us a call. I, uh, somebody was trying to Western Union money when I was up here because she thought it was an old friend from Facebook who was in hard times and it turned out to be a total scam. But we were able to prevent it because the lady that worked at Western Union at uh, Jewel was keen to that going on. So, I mean, be careful of that as well. Absolutely. And uh, the Sheriff's Department is not going to come to your house to arrest you for not paying your taxes. <laughs> that is not what we do. <laughs> you never, we would never call you and tell you you have a warrant for your arrest. We would come to your house. Yeah, we're going to surprise you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, at, at the restaurant, um, I got hit twice with the whole, uh, we're going to shut your electric off yeah. if you don't pay. That's another one. And they like to hit the only people who don't, yes. obviously don't want the lights on. So that's one you should look out for, too. Twice this year, they tried to get me with that. I had fun with it, actually. Yeah, so just be mindful. Nobody will call you unless you're anticipating. Comcast doesn't call you. Right. None of these companies call you unless they are trying to scam you, get into your computer, or, or get your identity stolen. Good point. So Absolutely. Thank you. Just something to think about, and it's actually a question also. A lot of people turn location services off on their phone. If they're texting 911, does that prevent you from being able to find them if they really need that help if location services is off? That's a good question. That's an IT question. I think we're, if you text 911, I know we can track you if you have it off. Just like find my iPhone. Yeah, that's yeah, it. I know we can track you if you have it off, because if we have a missing teenager or whatever, we can still track them. If they, unless they completely turn the phone off. That's yeah, because it contains an IP address. Yeah, right, correct. Yeah, and then uh, there's also different lines of communication that we have with each of the cell phone providers that are only accessible for emergency For police, it brings you to a different level where yes. it takes that off the table. Thank you. Good question. Anybody else wants? Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. So, just want to thank you for, for everything you brought for today. Oh, so, thank you. With, with the big uptake in crime in the surrounding area, and obviously it's even in our area, and probably increase, what, what is kind of like the strategies or techniques that maybe, and I think it's just a little kind of sure, right? It's the government, and it's the whole team, right? What's the strategies or, or things that have changed that you've done differently in the last six months or are planning on doing? And maybe what's the village going to do differently to kind of combat the increase in the I can tell you village-wise and, and county board-wise, whatever we have needed to adjust our manpower or our services, they've been buying us 100%, especially when it comes to public safety, okay? Um, especially when the civil unrest was happening. It was no questions asked. And I know Brian can verify that. Yeah. Um, as far as the, how do I we go ahead. kind of made partnerships with surrounding yes. agencies and with sharing intel, which we never really did. Kind of like the 9/11 thing, where that was the biggest complaint. A lot of people weren't sharing their intel. Now, 
it's opened up. Like you, this guy will email anybody, any detective that wants the information from up north. So we're sharing more information, and that's kind of how we found out who these guys are, where they're coming from, and a lot of them have been identified. A lot of them have been arrested. However, there's just so many of them. There could be three or four or five, six crews out every night, but we don't know where. And oh, go ahead. For those of you that don't know, uh, it's been about two years since we opened now. It seems like time flies, but we did uh, build a new public safety complex mm -hmm. on a Larraway Road, and with that, we put in a, a brand new state-of-the-art 911 facility. Mm -hmm. And there's 32 member agencies in there, 32 or 33. That means fire departments and and the local police forces that all traffic through that one nine one one center in this state of the art. So we have the best that we can get right now. That's the building we used to have this uh, meeting with all the chiefs of police. They all came because we all wanted to address this. You know. Yeah. So I, I agree with Brian one hundred percent, sir. That uh, the biggest change I've seen is the cooperation between agencies, the open lines of communication. Okay. And, uh, and that goes not only the locals, like we're in contact, of course, with Lockport all the time. Chief Lemon and I talk a lot. But uh, the feds as well. So that, that's the biggest thing. It's all tiers of law enforcement, much more open lines of communication. The intel is huge because then I can focus my manpower at the right areas. And I know what I'm looking for. And we also have deputies assigned and not assigned up here, but they're assigned to the FBI task forces. Yes. So we could use their... Uh, equipment if we need it out here. So we have contact with the FBI, uh, the DEA, any of those agencies, should we need any of the resources, they will offer them to the county if we have used them. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, I... So you're talking about getting them all arrested. So many jurisdictions are, are frustrated with the courts then because they're turning them loose. Sure. And you got the same bad guys back on the street. How is our jurisdiction handling those that are arrested? Well, that, that, that great question, and I, and I hate to use the same term over and over again with communication, but I can tell you our department has state's attorneys that they deal with directly. So when our guys go to them and say, instead of just throwing a, a file on their desk and walking out and hopefully they approve it, no, there's certain, certain state's attorneys that we'll go to for certain types of crimes. So they're well versed. And they know we're not going to hand them garbage. It's no, we're not dropping them in Will County. These cases don't get dropped up. Right. in Chicago. Right, right. I'll be right with you, sir. Sorry. Yes, ma'am. This is more for town and state. Uh, I mean, Mike and state. Um, in regards to, there's a machine that they're talking about through the county buying to record license plates and keep them for 30 days because of the crime that's been going on with all the homes, either they're taking cars or whatever. Is that something you guys are supporting or not supporting? Well, there's, there's two things on that. Number one, municipalities have the, the authority or they loosely have the authority not to do that if they want. Okay. The, the issue that the county's having a little bit is that some of the municipalities are asking the county to allow those cameras to be put on county property. Now, right now, there's no state statute on that. And in fact, I was talking today, leadership uh, on our state agenda. We are, push, we are going to push the state to create some state agenda uh, legislation on that so that we have something to follow. Because we don't want to get in a situation where we put this out there on our property without state legislation. Somebody gets caught with it and they get kicked because we weren't supposed to put the camera on that property. So that's where we're kind of caught right now. We're talking to the state's attorney. They're looking into what we can and can't do. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't think there'll be a problem once we have some kind of legislation that lets us know exactly what we can do with that. I know uh, Homer isn't doing that yet. I know New Lennox is already doing it within the municipality. Uh, it's, it should be something that Homer looks at. And what she's talking about is cameras that can read a license plate, but they would only read the license plate if the lieutenant found out something happened and somebody knew the license plate, they could put it into the system and it would automatically ping the second they went by that. You know, some of the issues are how long is that data being held? 30 um, days is what I'm hearing too. Well, that's what the companies are doing right now. But, you know, again, it's, State legislation, if you don't have that clear, then it creates problems for the justice system. So that's what we're working on right now. I think once that resolved, once that's resolved, it shouldn't be a problem for us. I know, because I know people have been complaining about the, and I, I'm, I'm one, I hate those red light things that catch you if you have right. a ticket or whatever, because I think they're so unfair. It's a minimum, minimum of a couple seconds, and all of a sudden you get tagged. 
But I mean, I think this one would be a good idea only because then if somebody is, I mean, I have OnStar, so if I need to find out where my car is at, I've got my OnStar. But those that don't have those things, don't have those. It's not there. an exact science either because your car may have been stolen because they're not using their own cars to make, commit crimes anymore. You never reported it stolen, but there's a uh, vehicle that fits the description of just rock or rock right. somebody, okay? Now they come to your house, right. right? And you haven't even reported your car stolen yet. So right. there's, it could become a sticky situation. Gotcha. Thank you. Sir, did you have something? What gang activities happening within Homer Glen, if any? Is there any active gang? Mostly, you know, I know it's probably to go out west, you know, Crest Hill. Yeah. You know, those areas, obviously, there's increase, but it, what's within Homer Glen limits? That's not what it is. Most of the gang activity we're seeing is more in the, the urban areas. Okay. Yes, sir. Good question. Yeah, knock on wood. Yes. With communication, are you able to communicate with Chicago? Because I'll be listening to a scanner and so many of the times that people, like they're pulling over whatever, Chicago, 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 Chicago. Sure. Chicago. And to her point, they let them all out, and then they're, you know, trailing down here. Right. Chicago has assisted us. We have got a group of four of them. I don't want to talk about the case specifically, the carjacking or what have you, but Chicago helped us knock on those doors and grab those guys into custody. So, yes, they do cooperate. Yeah. And they we don't let them out with county trust. As a matter of fact, just so yeah. you know, the uh, ribbon cutting on the Raven Courthouse will happen this Friday. Uh, we'll be moving in there in the next couple of weeks. State of the art courthouse, and yeah, they will be prosecuted if they go to crime in this county. Mm -hmm. Good. Yes, ma'am. Question about that license plate camera thing. It's interesting, but aren't a lot of professionals who are taking these cars able to change these license plates within minutes? Isn't that something that's been happening? Uh, I think that happened with the black car that they change the license plates quickly. Sure. And then you won't be able to track it down. To your point, no extra points, no doubt. No. Yeah, but what we've seen with our cars, though, is uh, generally because of location devices and or getting the information out by a sperm or different, and we're, we're locating the cars pretty quick and we've had the plates still on the vehicle. Yeah, it's, it's when they've got them for a long time they can switch them out. And, that's, I, and I want to segue on to that. Traffic enforcement. I don't want people thinking that we're trying to nickel and dime people with traffic enforcement. There's more benefits of traffic enforcement, and that's one of the good points. There's a lot of times we'll pull a car over, speed, and guess what? The license plate's not matching the VIN, and it's stuff like that. Um, if we're not pulling cars over that are coming through town for speeding, they can be going through and doing whatever they want. We don't know it, okay, folks? So there's a lot more to traffic enforcement than just... The most important thing is compliance, public safety, so... Our teens, everybody is not getting hurt on the roads. That's number one. But number two, there's the residual effect of finding other crimes via the traffic stop. Okay. Did it? Along those same lines, and you, sh you shouldn't call them every day that someone continually, <laughs> a person is speeding past your house. But we've had issues, and, I, and I've called Brian and said, you know, this one intersection, mm -hmm. getting people blowing stop signs every day. Uh, they'll put somebody out there and kind of check the area out for a while to kind of curtail that. And then if it happens again, then we'll go back at it. But I think you should, again, you should call because that one neighbor likes to go a little fast all the time. But if you see some continual situations or intersections, let them know and then they can put some somebody out there for a day or two to make sure something. That's also, that's also something that if you have an issue like that, you're in the subdivision and you're seeing this happen continually, you can come to the public safety meeting at the village, let us know. And Lieutenant Holly is there. We direct it to Lieutenant Holly. Mm -hmm. He takes note of it and, and takes care of that for us. So if you have something like that, don't hesitate to let us know. Absolutely. So the more note. people that know about these things, the better it's going to be. Take note that 151st is 35. <laughs> and even I, you know, once you get used to going the normal speed you go and you drop it down, which we just did. And kind of put that in your, your memory brains so that you're not doing the usual 45. Sure. Has the GPS in vehicles helped in catching criminals that are stealing the cars from this area, or are they able to disable that feature on a car quickly where it stops you from doing it? Sure. Without giving up too much detail <laughs> <laughs> on how we locate these vehicles, the systems in these newer cars do help us find but yeah. I, I really, it isn't the GPS. Do the criminals, though, have the technology, most of them, to yeah. quickly disable that, though? No. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But 
but they don't know what we use. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, yeah. it's a quick means to an end for them a lot of, yeah. a lot of times we see. They're going to use it to uh, rob a cigarette shop or use it to <coughs> rob a gas station, you know, that kind of deal. They're going to use it for transportation and dump it. Yes, ma'am. Is it true that uh, a lot of these carjackings and a lot of these, um, a lot of the thefts, like of, the, of, of things of people's vehicles and things like that at, at their homes, is that a, uh, a lot of that you're finding uh, gang related, like um, in other words, initiations or things like that? It's not yeah. initiations, it's a crew out of Chicago. We don't know if it's uh -huh. a specific gang, but it is uh -huh. organized. Uh -huh. They're well organized and they know uh -huh. what they're doing and yeah. they come out to all the different territories. Uh -huh. Good question. Uh, sir, in the back, you had your hand up. I guess. Yes, we traffic enforcement. Uh, Mike at the beginning of the meeting, we spoke about the financial benefit <coughs> of having a sheriff's department rather than our own police force. But are we losing all that money that comes in, that revenue from the traffic citations? I understand none of it actually stays in town. Actually, the revenue is, there was new legislation, which you know, Mike, where they lowered all fines that are given to the counties. So I don't know that we're getting all that much money out of it to begin with, I, to be honest with you. Well, you've got a Spoke of World Records uh, officer. <laughs> <laughs> officer he told me in his own words that 97% of the people are visited and the people going through town. It just seems like we're losing a lot of revenue that could support the village. Yeah, no, I don't know the exact numbers on the amount of revenue each citation generates, but that's something. Yeah, thank you for asking that. Okay. Ma'am in the back. Uh, sorry, I, I was just at the township meeting. Um, oh. Lieutenant Holly, I just heard them say at the township meeting, and I've also seen things in the neighborhood, that there's been an uptick the last few months of vandalism in Homer Township. Do you know if there's any specific contributors to that, or do you think it's the current situation no, of things? That's a, that's a very good question. I can tell you, um, overall, if we see burglaries of vehicles and uh, say burglary of motor vehicle, well, let me back up first, I apologize. Back when I was a deputy, still on the street, if we had burglary of motor vehicle, it's high school kids that were out, mom and dad didn't know where they were at, they're car shopping, trying handles, getting stuff out. But now we've got the guys that are professional, really. They're trying handles, they're stealing cars, okay? The vandalism, generally what we've seen, that's juvenile, as far as wrecking parks, you know, spray paint and stuff. Uh, uh, I can't speak to it for yard signs, but generally the other criminal damage to property is going to be juveniles that are out. Did that answer your question? Well, I mean, like, do, you, do you think there's any specific, sorry, specific contributors? Like in our area alone, because we have dark skies community, <clears throat> now that things have kind of changed and unfortunately people are away to, you know, able to get away with more criminal activity. Do you think that there's anything that we could do within our neighborhoods, you know, here in Homer Glen to kind of help resist that? You know, that's a great question. Um, a big thing, and this is kind of what I'm going to get to later with keeping children safe, this is part of it. If there's kids out in a park at night, the biggest thing the, the community can do is know where your kids are, especially know who your kids are hanging around with, okay? I can't tell you how often we're patrolling and we'll catch kids out after curfew, up to no good, and mom and dad had no idea where they were at. You gotta know where your kids are. And that's why we were talking about community. If you know your neighbors, how about it growing up? The neighbor found you doing something, they would get you, as well as your parents, right? We don't see that a lot anymore. Um, so, I mean, you know, uh, knowing where they're at, being aware of your community. Too often people are getting their information just off of social media. They're not talking to their neighbors one-on-one. -on -one. They don't know who they are. And we always make the joke, if it's on the internet, it must be true, right? Well, guess what? They're believing social media like it's gospel. Okay? Um, so what I'm saying is get out and meet your neighbors, talk with them, get to know each other's families, and that way, you see Johnny walking down the street at 2 in the morning when you're on the way home from a wedding or something. Hey, what was Johnny doing out at 2 in the morning? You know? We have to know what each other's doing. I, I don't know if that really answers your question. No, I'm, just, I, I'm thinking, you know, that's a major one right there, yeah. absolutely. But, you know, having more lights on our homes, you know, mm -hmm. people locking things up, 
But what I'm talking about, like what I just heard was like township property too, that's getting utilized. Mm -hmm. So, and that kind of goes along with what you're saying, the kids hanging out at the parks and that, but mm -hmm. I think there's more, you know, suggestions we could probably be looking at. Yeah, we've had, if there's a, you know, say a park's got a light on it, we've had it where we're responding because a light got shot out by a pellet gun. You know, it's just, lighting it always helps, I get that, okay? And we try and cover as much ground as we can, but there's not an end all be all to any of this, okay? I see where you're going with it, and uh, yeah, I mean, of course, they're going to be able to hang out in a dark area where nobody's at, but um, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. No, we usually, when I was in patrol, spotlight in the park yeah. with our spotlights, yeah. checked on them. I remember being here in Woodbine, there's a park back here, and you know, uh, this was way back when the kids were in there, I just flipped the lights on, started driving towards them, they're done, you know, they leave, they don't want any interaction. So. Yeah, and thanks, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, go ahead. thanks for bringing that up on the township, because, you know, we got township within the village as well, and in the township area surrounding here, I can tell you that, um, sorry, this mask is making my nose itch. Um, anyway, we get information from the township personnel as well as village personnel, and then, of course, I'm going to, of the, uh, the activity. I talked to the schools. That helps us narrow down when this stuff is occurring and where this stuff is occurring so I can focus attention on that. So it all comes down to communication. Sure, my pleasure. Anybody else? Yes. Question I have. Are you guys aware of it? Because I work at a bank in Portland. Mm -hmm. We get the mayor and we get the chief of police that gives us warning calls whenever there's something of seriousness going on. Is that going to happen around here? We have that. It's called reverse 911, and we put those out. Uh, if there's a missing elderly person in the area that's wandered away, um, a missing endangered child, if it's not safe. In fact, we had one out here mm -hmm. when you guys caught those guys on that weekend. Oh, you're talking from uh, Lockport? Yeah, no, the, probably months back you guys caught somebody, but it said stay in your house. It went out to everybody. Yeah. Well, we might get a lot more because of the fact that we're going to Yeah, no, it was like a stolen car. We had yeah. a corner and almost like yes. king in that. That was it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Anybody remember that? Yeah. We made like three arrusts that day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was a big one. The reverse 911 was going up there. So you guys are similar to what Mayor could Correct. Correct. Okay. Yes. Is that so? I'm sorry. Yes. Well, no, you, you don't have to sign up for it. it. It triangulates where your area is and it calls all those numbers. It's automatic. Automatic, correct. I think he's talking about the Nixle system. Yes, through the uh, Will County EMA. Thanks for bringing that up. Through the Will County Emergency Man Management Association, just Google the, the website for it, but there's something on there called Nixle. You can sign up for alerts, and it's different types of alerts. It could be, I can't remember if weather is on there, folks, but they list everything that they can notify you about. Okay? They, they, it is weather if it's a tornado. Got it. Or they have traffic accidents, power outages, yeah. Yeah. water breaks, Absolutely. and accidents. And uh, getting back to the public unrest that we were talking about <coughs> earlier, I can tell you this, especially you know when people are worried that they're going to come through and start burning down Home Depot and Meyer and that, we actually sent deputies in person to each business to talk to each manager so they were aware ahead of time on the intel we were getting, okay, as well as notifying by phone. I remember one see you room on that day. <laughs> How safe is Homer Glen compared to surrounding communities? I really don't want to jinx us, but we've been ranked in, I think, the top five for the last several years. It's, it's, it's a great community. And that can only, you know, of course, we're proud of that, working here, folks. <clears throat> but it's also the community. It's uh, being in contact with our citizens, with our businesses, with the village officials, the mayor, county board members. And uh, like I said, from Sheriff Kelly to Brian Cottons around down the line, they're truly interested in this community. Any concerns, I, he's, I can call them right off, and they're on it. Um, but again, it's not something that we can sit on our laurels. This can change overnight, and we realize it. The carjacking is a perfect example, folks. Okay, happened at 6 o'clock at night. We're not going to downplay that. On the other hand, I'm trying to keep it, have everybody keep it in perspective how often we are seeing it, okay? But I still get the people on calls whose car was stolen. Well, I thought I could leave my keys in the car. This is Homer. I'm still hearing it. I want to beat my head off of this desk when I hear it. In this day and age, we're hearing this. 
Okay. But overall, Brock, great question. Um, very safe community overall. But again, it's only by everybody working together. Okay. We're not going to shirk our responsibilities. We're going to do our absolute best. But we can only do so much, and it takes everybody working together to keep it that way. And like I said, we've got the unconditional support of Mayor Yukich, the Village Board, the County Board, and my, my hierarchy, and, and all of you. So thank you for that. I appreciate that. You were actually number one last year, which I brought up the whole kind of point when I gave all props to these guys to do an amazing job. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yes, ma'am. What do you hear about Orland Mall? Uh, rumors between everybody just don't go there. Is there a lot happening? I can't speak to the day-to-day -day there. I can tell you when we're getting rumors that, or that Orland Mall was being burned down, you know, and stuff like that, I, I directly call Orland Park Police, and I know one day they said no. Nah. There was some, you know, activity at, a, at an outline store where there was disruption going on, but not an organized, you know, action. But again, that comes to the communication. So I'm not going to go off of social media. I call that department directly. We, Steve and I talked to the mayor a lot over there, Mayor Keith. And you know they did have that incident at the Sky Zone yes. where they allowed 800 people with a 260 person capacity. He's in the process now of revoking their license and getting rid of that issue. They responded immediately. Orland Police did. They took care of the situation. Uh, they're pretty on top of it over there. And can you tell me they took a the ball now? They don't have problems blocking every entrance. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you know a lot of stuff on social media isn't factual. We've had great interoperability with them. It's a big word, interoperability. They're in Cook County and we're in Will. So generally, you're going to think there's not a lot of good communication, but I can't tell you. Anytime I've needed them to come across for something or they need us, we're more than willing to help each other out. It's a great working relationship. i got a lot of respect for them. Yes, ma'am. We just moved from, we lived in South Holland for about 42 years, and now we're in Lockport. Lockport, is that a pretty... <laughs> Same community, or do it you is. It's another great area. I can tell, like I said before, I talk to Chief Lennon a lot. I got a lot of respect for those guys. They back us up. We back them up. There was just some arrests off of like Gower near, you know, 355 in that area. That was my husband. He brought him to jail. I'm sorry. That was my husband. He brought him to jail. <laughs> 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 oh God! Since we're new, we're, we 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 moved to Lago Vista where all the old people. Sure. Die. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> no, very safe community. It is. I, I don't live too far from there. I'm just not old enough to get in there yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the key word because that's a nice area. We have the Chicago Info Peak uh, person, John Consonara. He's been out here probably four times already. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, we've got, me and Mike have a real good working relationship with him. We work good with the city of Lockport. We work good with Lennox, we work with all of them, being a county board rep, but like they were saying, we, we, Keith Peckow, it's a great mayor, we're talking to him more often than not. And you know, so everybody's sharing what they know. And for uh, John Castanaro to come out here, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. You know, he's been here so many times now, it's almost like a second home. Mm -hmm. And he's impressed with our forces. Thank you very much. Good. Thank you. Yeah, and to your, here you're moving from South Holland, you hear about this incident over here, right away you're like, what's going on? Yeah, now, it's kind of, I'm going, oh my God, hold on. Right. <laughs> yeah, but, but what I want you to realize is, you know, it, it's awful. Anything can happen anywhere at any time. We understand that. You got to look at the frequency of which it's occurring, okay? And that incident in particular, how many arrests per I had three and possibly we got them all. Yeah, we got them all. Yeah. And, and again, working with But the, that was it, the people from, that was our local. So yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's we work with state police, Lockport, and now not, not Homer Glen or Lockport, unincorporated area. I think they were done. Does Will County have any input on the ring doorbell and yes, the we're alerts? Yes, partners with ring. You so yes. the alerts that come through there do they come from you or are they coming from the people of the village? Both. Both. Okay. And, and you know, folks, I've had, I had a situation I'll bring up. We did a training exercise at a local business here in town, and they did fake gun sounds with the two by fours, you know, to get the drill moving. Well, we had signage out around the business showing training in progress, blah, blah, blah. Well, people said there were multiple, you know, shots being fired at a school. Schools are going on lockdown, all of this stuff, because the messaging on the ring. Neighbors were throwing it out there. So I want to make sure everybody 
remembers, please, don't take what you see on social media as the, what's actually going on. It's good to have knowledge, I get that. Mm -hmm. But I think I'm preaching to the choir here. Mm -hmm. If you need to confirm something, don't be afraid to either want to call the village, call the sheriff's office, call us. We can confirm what's going on. When the alerts mm -hmm. come over from, from the Will County Sheriff, does it come over as Will County Sheriff when it comes over the rain alerts? As far as rain alerts? Not on rain. No. Yeah, no. No, no. 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 Okay. The reverse 911 will okay. announce office. I don't think we've had one of those disaster drills and we've, that we've done several of them a lot for mm -hmm. that people don't start getting on Facebook and saying the world's blowing up. Right. They, yeah. they do some serious disaster drills oh, yeah. Yeah. on a lock or you know, like a bomb went off or something mm -hmm. and they train for that kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. automatically people start firing up. There's yeah. something going on. That's, well, that's like, why I asked because, I, because if you guys are partnered with Ray, right. would the alerts come over from no, the Will County? That's a great question. The bad information comes from the citizens. You know, if it's solid, it would be mm -hmm. probably our partnership more deals with getting the data from them mm -hmm. or the video because we do mm -hmm. solve crimes with that video mm -hmm. or identify suspects. Uh, however, we don't personally send out a ring alert okay. to spread anything around. Okay. Unless the situation up here, we send out photographs which would come from the local country, but they wouldn't come across the ring because not everybody has rings. Okay. Okay. And folks, if you're not signed up, when our, our, uh, you're not familiar with it, the Will County Sheriff's Office does have a web page and they do have press releases on there. It's a simple, it's willcosheriff.org, and uh, I'll just give it to you, it's W-I-L-L-C-O-S-H-E-R-I-F-F.org. And I, in that section, it uh, has press releases, you know, for the major incidents, okay? Um, if I may, uh, what to do when observing a crime in progress. The big thing, like we talked before, if you're on a cell phone, stay on that phone. You can keep feeding the dispatcher information as it's going on. Um, we need what we're looking for. If you have an offender on foot, what are they wearing? Don't be afraid to tell me the race of the sub subject. I got to know who I'm looking for. Um, direction they're traveling, uh, what they're doing. It's it's all of it. Okay. Uh, vehicle license plate, huge. You can get the color of the car. If you're not a car expert, you don't know what kind of car. It was a red car with four doors, and here's the plate. Plate's huge. If you're observing it, okay. Um. We don't want vigilantes out there. Oh, go ahead. Were you going to say something? No. Uh, it's, it's observe and report, mostly. Okay, we don't want you getting involved in something you don't need to be getting involved in. If you see it's a life and death situation, you need to get involved, by all means, please, help the person out. But if it's something that you don't need to be getting involved with, don't make more of a mess of it than you should. Stay on the phone and give us all the information. Okay, anything to add to that? Cool. Um, keeping children safe. There's a few levels of that, folks. I already talked about the high school kids. Um, knowing where they're at, knowing who their friends are. My mom always said that. Tell me who your friends are, I'll tell you who you are. Okay, number one. Number two, kids with these vehicles. That's We're getting a lot of them. They're the ones speeding through the neighborhoods. We're getting complaints about them. If you got a neighbor kid that uh, you know, tell them mom or dad, please have them slow down so they don't kill themselves or somebody else, okay? It's the worst notification you got to make. Um, the other thing, if you don't know who it is, but you know the car, you think you know where they live, you can drop us a dime and let us know, and we'll be glad to go up to the door and say, hey, your neighbors are complaining that you're speeding through this neighborhood, you need to slow it down before you hurt yourself or somebody else. Um, yes, sir? A uh, really good point, just simply because we see a lot of this in public services and safety. Mm -hmm. We get many uh, residents who come in, uh, the gripe is that there's people speeding through their neighborhood. Eight or nine times out of ten, it's somebody within that neighborhood. So if you know who it is and you can identify that person, please let us know, let the sheriff know. Uh, I, I, think, you know I see people speaking down my street all the time, and it's the kid who just finally grew up and got his license. Yeah, and so um, I've been seeing him for 21 years now. Thank you. For that. Now that's me through the neighborhood. That's a great point. Thank you, Carlo. And folks, real quick, I don't want to get too lost on the, on the traffic tickets. They are what they are. You know, there's, there's people complaining that we write too many tickets, but I can be totally honest with you. For every one person that complains, my guy is issuing too many tickets. I got 10 more saying we ain't doing anything to keep the people safe on the roads. Okay? Sorry. And uh, I was trying to think what else I just lost my train of thought on that. Oh, my traffic deputy that people tend to complain about, guess what? We're sending them while we're getting the complaints. That's where we're sending them. Okay? 
it is what it is. I mean, people complain, I can't ignore it. I have to get people there, okay? Our ultimate goal is not revenue. Our ultimate goal is the safety of the community. I'm serious. Compliance, okay? If I can have no fatal accidents, I'm very, very happy. I don't want anybody injured out there, okay? Um, getting back to keeping children safe, for those of you that have, like, uh, kids that are getting older, know what they're doing on those phones. They got access to everything out there. Uh, the gentleman in the back brought up the trafficking issue. You got guys hunting for kids on these websites. They're acting like they're 15 and they're 35. Okay, please uh, get um, like a web nanny, they call it. You know, something that tracks the sites. You know, protects them from certain websites, but know what your kids are doing. It's a shame when you got a sixth grader with a phone that gives them access to the world. They can't even make correct decisions. So you, that's a very important way to keep your kids safe know what's going into their brains through those phones. Um, uh, yes, sir. I'm sorry. Oh, man, I'm sorry. Um, okay. Because I've, I've been to seminars for the, the, the internet trafficking for the kids. In um, Homer Glen, who, who can families contact if they see something? Um, I missed the first part, I'm sorry. In Homer Glen, yes. in Will County, yeah. who, who can families contact if they have an issue with that. Um, oh, yeah, you call us. We're, we're your first so, answer. So call Will County. Absolutely. Will County. Yes, thank you for asking that. Yep. Yeah, that'd be us. And, um, yeah, as far as uh, going out, Homer Glen is a safe community, praise God, okay? But we don't want kids taking that for granted, going places they shouldn't go. 159 is a thoroughfare, right? Uh, 143rd. There's cars coming in down Bell Road. There's cars coming from everywhere. So these kids have to know if they're going somewhere, let mom and dad know where you're going. Okay? Don't go off the path. You know? Uh, don't go places you shouldn't go. I don't want them too brave where they're riding a bike by themselves at this hour of the night to Heritage Park. You don't know who's lurking where. Okay? Know where they're going. Make sure they're in a group and then you know where they're going. Uh, that's the one benefit of the phone. <laughs> you know where they're at. Yes? How many registered sex offenders do we have in Homer Glen? I can't quote that. I'd have to look it up, and I apologize. But that's by, that's available through the uh, State oh, Police, Police. Illinois State Police website. And actually, their website is very good, I have to say. Mm -hmm. Any FOID questions or uh, concealed carry questions, the Illinois State Police website is excellent on that. And I'm, I would refer any, anybody to that. Um, anybody else? Are you making uh, arrangements currently with school going back into session now? Because uh, coming in the next few weeks. Right? Absolutely. So I can tell everybody, thank you, Carla, for bringing that up. Um, we have deputies assigned to each school. So if any of you have children at the schools, nine times out of ten, you're going to see a deputy there. Okay? We're on a first name basis with not only the administration, but the principals, the secretaries, they see us in those schools. We do uh, regular um, you know, drills, be it disaster drills, lockdown drills, any type of drills like that, and we're on a first name basis with them, absolutely. And that's District 92 as well as 33C. And we also help Lockport with the high school. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's what you said, you know, it's in the younger schools, you know, like Schilling is all kindergarten. And uh -huh. Do you guys have something at the schools, or do they have security, or, you know, I know that's probably a question I should have asked when I enrolled my kids, but it just kind of didn't Yes, that's a good question. Too much on camera to give too much information okay. out, right. but I can tell you that we are there every day. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. You talk to me after. Sure. I'll let you know. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Are you much like the Mnemonic School System, where they have the officer that's in there, the, the Mnemonic Police that's in the school? As far as an SRO, no, but we handle it a different way. Okay. Okay. Yeah, an assigned SRO. You're talking like we have deputies assigned to the high schools, mm -hmm. but as far as the great school districts that we deal with. They're not quote unquote SROs, but we do have dedicated deputies that are assigned to each school amongst their other duties. And we have de a detective division that keys on just the schools. Okay. Yes, sir. You have like officer friendly program? It's a great question. You know what? We don't because I try and instill it in my deputies that work here. This is community oriented policing. So we, I, that's, that's the way they are supposed to be on the job. Um, I wouldn't want to see one cop act in one way or another or another way. And I can say that's department-wide. That's the way we want to roll. That's a great question. Thank you for that. But I can tell you, through the, the COVID, 
you know, we were showing up at people's houses for birthdays, you know, doing the drive-bys. We're knee-deep with the uh, PTO, helping the schools with stuff, so the kids know us, uh, they recognize us. So thank you for that. Yes? Do you have anything with dogs? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know what, folks? Thanks for asking that. Sheriff Kelly's been huge on this. I think we've got six canines yeah. now, probably. In addition to that, we just got a bloodhound yes. um, last week. And this bloodhound, what we did was we bought scent jars. So if you have an elderly parent or a um, um, autistic child or a child with special needs which may wander away, you can call us and ask for one of these jars. What these jars do is you rub this, it's just a sterile gauze pad, rub it under their armpit, and you put it back in this jar, seal it up, it's good for 10 years. If somebody has to wander away and you have one of these jars for you, you call us out. Our dog, uh, keep it on top of your fridge is what we recommend. We'll smell that, it will contract uh, your child or uh, elderly parent or what have you that was special needs. It's a really great program. It's great, yeah. Wow. And thank you for asking about that, folks. I can tell you today, we had three canines from the Sheriff's Office training in Heritage Park. One of them was the bloodhound he's talking about. They were doing tracking. So we had some village employees that were helping us out with that. Will there be an effort to get that message out? Yes, yes. there was a press release and a press conference last week. I think we were on ABC 7 News. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. We'll get that out, Mr. Fialco. Uh, it's like you said, this happened last week, so it's in the infant stages, but we're gonna be more than happy to get that out. Absolutely. Yes. I think it's interesting that you brought up the officer friendly program. You know, like I said, it's very different living in the city where we just came versus here. There's very different opinions and views here, and we're glad to be home with because we support our law enforcement. But I think that there's things that kids, such as my kid is six. Okay, so he's starting to see things, he's starting to notice and hear things. And I think it might be interesting in this time to establish that friendship to a young kid because right now it's very scary what they see. They don't have the comprehension per se to understand the difference between riots and cops and then they hear there's bad cops and good cops. You know, you know what I mean? It's kind of a touchy time right now. Um, so it would be interesting to see, you know, how the school um, maybe create that partnership and that respect and, you know, just that friendship between mm -hmm. police officers and children. You know, I'm glad you brought that up. And thank you, sir, again. And thank you as well. Um, that could be something as simple as once in a while we'll have an event right here. Sure, I love that. You know, to That's just great. with the kids. Something like this, not talking to this degree, but the kids can ask us questions, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Yes. We love it. But they have, I meet the officers and firemen day, and that way the kids, and this is before, mm -hmm. and stuff that, so I think that's a great idea. That's excellent, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Anybody else? Speaking of dogs, we have some amazing dogs from Oak County, not only the Sheriff's Department, but at the Children's Advocacy Center, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm on the board of directors there. We have two dogs. They do interviews mm -hmm. with kids that have been molested or had issues. And the dogs are there for comfort. We also have the dogs be able to go to court with them so they can pet the dogs. We also have, I don't know if it's two dogs on the state's attorney's office, that can actually sniff out hard drives when they're going after one of these pornographers or someone that's trafficking online. They can take these dogs, I don't know how they do it, but they can sniff out a hard drive hidden in the ceiling to find and catch these guys. And we've had a lot of good prosecutions because of that. So we, we got a lot of dogs. Yes. yes. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, Greg. Do you have any information on <coughs> restarting the Will County Citizens Police Academy? Mm -hmm. COVID has caused us to stop it. Um, as soon as we can open it back up, we will let the public know. We've had a lot of great results yeah, with that. Thanks for bringing that up. Here. Yeah. It, uh, it's, it's well worth it for the citizens to sign up for that. <coughs> they have it in Lockport and Romeoville. And you don't have to live in the villages. And if what you is want, it? Huh, Citizens Police Academy. It's an introduction to what the police do and how they do it. Uh, Gives you more understanding. It's like an overview of what we do. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah. traffic stops. You do, you know, just different scenarios with evidence collection and what have you. It's pretty cool program. It is. And it also goes through the judgmental shooting. I'm sorry. The judgmental, the of course. Uh, yes. Firearm training simulator. Well set up. Yeah, you do simulators and that kind of stuff too. And to your point, thank you for bringing it up. We do that in conjunction with the other police right. departments as well. If you want to learn something about uh, the gangs, 
Romeoville has an excellent program on that. Mm -hmm. With the community policing, did that also include the radar gun that they were handing out at one time for all the speeding? You said there's a lot of speeding going on, a lot of people complaining, a lot of people complaining, people are getting tickets for speeding. Mm -hmm. But does that program still exist with the, uh, the um, basically within the village that somebody can ask for that radar gun and somehow you guys work with them to... Yeah, you can always just approach us on that and... Uh, That's still available is what I'm saying. Yeah, we, you we can make it available. Yeah. What I'm going to get at is if, if, if there's a certain section, say I'm getting complaints about speeders, okay, and I'm and it's obvious that they're speeding, you know, we'll, we'll do enforcement. You target that area, hopefully that takes care of the problem. If there's a misunderstanding, because if there's hills, People will misinterpret that somebody's speeding, but they're just coming down the hill. It's, it's what your, your mind is trying to process. Coming around a curve, uh, they appear faster than they actually are. So if I can give somebody understanding by showing up, getting the radar gun to them to show them, hey, here's how we're, what do you think this car is going? I think it's going 45, it's going 30, just for knowledge. So isn't there a program though that they actually give the radar gun to the we could do that in certain situations. Person within the village. It, it, just briefly, what is the process for that? It would be contacting me. That's it? Absolutely. Yes, sir. I just wanted to make sure that wasn't dropped as part of community policing. Right. You know, that that was part of it where you have, are not doing that right now. Right. No, not a problem. Yeah, I'd be glad to do that. And, and the reason I want to do that is not only it's easy for us to go out and do traffic enforcement, okay? But I want to have understanding with the community too. You know, if there is a misinterpretation, I want them to understand what that misinterpretation is. And, and we will always do the enforcement first, you know, to see what's actually going on. And if it's something that I can educate the local residents on, I would be glad to do that. And that's what that goes hand in hand with. There's a, um, at public safety, we also have items that, that we'll put out, signage that we'll put out uh, about speeding. You know, uh, uh, we, we had it here in Pebble Creek. Uh, I forget exactly what it says, something like uh, free tickets people, available. Or yeah, like, yeah, free tickets available, these type of things. And it, it does work, and it, it definitely slows people down because you, you're driving and you're, you're, you've got 100 different things on your mind, and your kids in the back seat yelling, and you go through the subdivision too fast. And then all of a sudden you see the sign, and it triggers. And the other things that we do too is, if, if we have speed cameras, uh, the, uh, uh, the radar, we have the radar uh, initiated uh, signage that we'll put up depending on how severe the speeding is and, and if we have a, a continual, you know, uh, complaint about a certain area, and we'll put those up too. So, so there's other things that, that we do besides the, the radar guns, but we're always trying to stay on top of that. It's a great point, Brock. And, and folks, a lot of people think stop signs are a form of slowing traffic down. They're not. So if you were to come to a public safety meeting, just to give you an idea, there's a process that we have to follow. They follow the Mudcat uh, uniform, whatever. There's an engineering book, a guide on the steps we have to take before putting certain signs in. Uh, if there's a traffic complaint, nine times out of ten, it's coming to us. We do some enforcement, let them know what we find. If it continues, there's continual complaints, then there's other steps they can take, the speed counters and whatnot. I don't want you thinking it's a knee-jerk reaction, we're going to throw a stop sign here. There's a process that we have to follow, engineering ones. Okay. Anything to add to that, you guys? Uh, well, the only other, other thing I'll add is when we decided to take the speed limit from 45 to 35 here on 151st Street, we had communication with Lieutenant Holly, and one of the things we discussed is, you know, this is a pretty severe step from 45 to 35. People are going to be speeding you know, well beyond the 35. At what point do we start saying, okay, now we're going to start issuing tickets? And that time was discussed between us, and we came up with an uh, understanding between the Sheriff's Department and the Village as to at what point do we start taking the next step. So, you know, the last thing we want to do is start punishing people who are all of a sudden, it, it, you know, instant. So we had signs saying pretty soon it's going to be 35 on whatever date that was, I forget now. So that was up first. Then the speed limit signs came in. And we're still in the process of, uh, there's, there's some areas where we need to add some 35 mile an hour speed limit signs that we're, we're finding out as we're going. So, you know, it, it's an ongoing process. So we're trying to, uh, the, the Sheriff's Department works hand in hand with us on these things. Absolutely, it does. And uh, folks, I want you to keep in mind too, you know, we're not sitting here chomping at the bit to start writing tickets on 151st, okay? In the grand scheme of things, we're all worried about public safety at this point. You know, we hear about all this stuff going on. 
So I'm going to focus most of our attention in keeping the community safe, protecting our stores, protecting our neighborhoods. But also we have to remember as citizens that are driving, a lot of us were kids, that we also have to keep our streets safe, okay? So that's why with my traffic deputy or other, other deputies assigned to traffic, um, it's, it's where we are genuinely concerned there is an issue. I don't want you thinking we're setting up speed traps just to do speed traps. No, it's because there is a genuine concern by the community and we want to assure everybody's safety. Ensure everybody's safety, okay? I want to make sure that was out there. But we have to prioritize on what's going on, okay? Um, anybody else? I want to first, or go ahead, Steve. Just, uh, just to uh, say thank you to everybody that came to us. Because uh, we got people from our whole county board district. We have New Lenox, Lockport, and Homer. So uh, that represents the district that me and Mike are covering on the county board. And thanks for all coming out and all your questions. And I hope that you're satisfied with the answers you got. Because I know I was getting a lot of calls, a real lot of calls. And um, they kind of stop now. But, you know, if you're afraid about something or something's bothering you, you know, it sticks with you. And now I'm hoping that they're resolving some of this stuff. And you can still call me and Mike, you know, we'll respond to your calls. But, and we will do something. That's why we set this up. So uh, thank you again for coming out. And God bless you. Yeah. Of this community is second and none, and especially those of you that are here. So, thank you for supporting us through these tough times. I got to thank the village board, I got to thank the county board, Mayor Yukich, and the sheriff, everybody that supports us out here, but especially you because I'm telling you, it's nice to come to work and have somebody thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Why we take it personal? You're more, I, you're, you're our brothers and sisters in this community. It's not just a job. Trust me. So thank you. Thank you.